welcome to church. Happy Sunday. We're so glad that you're here with us today. I believe today you and I will encounter God. And let us start today our service with the Word of God proclamation. Come from Philippians 4, um, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. When in Chinese, 应当一无挂虑，只要凡事靠着祷告、祈求和感谢，将你们所要的告诉神，神所赐的出人意外的平安，必在耶稣基督里保守你们的心怀意念。那出人意外的平安，I pray that today the peace that surpasses all understanding，那出人意外的平安 will guard your heart and your mind today. And let us start today with worship. Let us rise up from wherever you are. Whether you're in valley low or mountain high, let's rise up and give God the praise that He deserves. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Did you know that the sound of your voice is the most powerful weapon that you possess? The best thing you can do in a crisis or disappointment is to praise God for who He is despite of what's going on around you. In 2 Chronicles 20, 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Tomorrow, go out against them, and the hand of the Lord will be with you. I don't know what's the situation you're currently facing that you feel it's impossible. But this morning, I encourage you to bring it to the Father and focus on the victory that Jesus won for all eternity. Focus on the goodness of God. God is waiting for us to sing in the middle of our storms and remember who He is despite of our circumstances. Let's worship and praise Him with our powerful voice. Join us. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Needs a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of this storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar.
Sweetest of 
Is this your first time here? 是第一次来到我们当中吗 ？We love to see you here. Whether it's your first time or your second time, however many times, 在组里每一天都是新的。Welcome you. If this is your first time here, scan the QR code and we will give you a form to fill out so that we can plug you into a group that suits you the best. Also, remember today we will start a verse. 那我想要请大家，啊、呃，问一个问题：你有没有过跟人家想一想，吵架的时候，那个题目是最白痴、最无聊 ，the most silly things， 或是 stupid thing that you've ever fought with anyone about？ Can you comment below？ Anything， 可以是 something about a car， anything， just anything that you think。It's stupid, silly, thinking bad. But 当下 you are so angry and you fight with others. What's that thing that came to your mind? I'll give you ten seconds to comment below. Interact with us. And today's verse come from Philippians four, verse six to seven. A lot of people probably have heard about this verse about the peace of God that surpass all understanding. 然后 don't be anxious, right? 然后要出人意外的平安 But a lot of people did not know that it actually Paul said it in the context of two people, two important members of the church fighting. They are having conflict, a serious conflict that may be causing division. You know, a lot of times in our lives, 我们反而是跟那个最熟悉的伙伴会有吵架或意见不合的时候 And this is what Paul says to encourage them: Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, meaning whether in conflict and peace, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving. You know, whenever I'm in conflict, it's so hard to give thanks for anything. All of my mind is occupied of 那个人做错什么 and how right I am. But Paul encourages that when we present our request to God, when we start giving thanks in our conflict, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. In conflict. In the peace, uh, in the time that doesn't have peace, 我们最需要就是来到上帝面前说 God, I don't know what to do, but I thank you for just being here with me. And that peace of God that surpasses understanding 会来保护你的心，保护你的意念， so that 我们的 mind 不会被 distracted， 不会 fill with 那些 anger and jealousy and bitterness. But the peace of God. That surpass all understanding will overflow our lives. So I pray today that the peace of God that surpass all understanding will guard your heart and mind. We have a survey. Ah, is to one point five of every one. Whether you are often coming or you are coming frequently, we are welcome. Only if you see one point five the ministry as one of your home or you are interested. 请你都 fill out the survey because we really do value your opinion. We want to improve our ministry, improve our Sunday experience. So I invite you to fill out the survey. And today we have a special announcement from Winston regarding a volunteer opportunity, a opportunity to give to, to our community about Mary's Kitchen, and that's at Winston. Hello, one point five. My name is Winston. And I'm the newly appointed community outreach deacon. I want to take this opportunity to promote our ongoing outreach effort. We're currently partnering with Mary's Kitchen for this donation effort. Now, Mary's Kitchen is a nonprofit organization whose aim is to provide compassionate care for the less fortunate of Orange County. There is now an urgent need for new or gently used sleeping bags, blankets, jeans, sweaters, and jackets. If you have any of these items to donate, you can drop them off at EFCI in the choir room. That's room number one hundred one, on Wednesdays between nine and eleven a.m. or on Fridays between ten a.m. and eleven a.m. And finally, also on Sundays from nine thirty to eleven a.m. 
This drive will close on Friday, February 19th. And that said, let us be a shining light to our community. If you have missed anything I have just said, I've posted the details on our 1.5G Facebook group page. So this quarter, our theme is to outreach. And that's why next Sunday, it's a Valentine Sunday, 二月十四号 we have a special, special Sunday service. It's a gospel outreach Sunday. That we want to invite new people among us, or people who maybe once among us but loved. You know, we now have no four building wall four building wall of church. What we have is an online ministry, and this online ministry relies on you and I to invite people in to share the link, ah,、uh, 让大家都可以听到神的话语 Next Sunday, I will not be preaching. Rather, we will invite four groups of people to share their stories and how, in their stories, God is among them. How God uses their laughters, their joy, their tears, and their sorrow, their pain, to draw out the best of God. How God is among every single step of the way. So I invite you. Come join us next Sunday, eleven ten, and invite your friends to join us. Remember, this quarter our theme is to outreach, and this explains why. 我们现在 Facebook daily 都会有人去 post stuff, a verse, something interesting in the news, or or even raffle about 谁会赢 the game. 我们之所以一直 post things on、uh, Facebook is because we see the Facebook as an online community church. So we, our church, 当然每一天都是 vibrant， 每一天都是 alive， always offering stuff. So I invite you to really click like and engage with us, so that we can have a vibrant church life. I know it's very different from before, but trust me. God is about to do new things, and I want to invite you to partner with us. So together in His kingdom, we will bring glory to the name of Jesus. And now, it's a time for offering. Offering is a、uh, duty for Christians and Christians only. It's a way we Christians express our thanksgiving and our faith to the Lord Jesus, for He has given us everything in our lives. Everything literally, and this is the way we give back to him a little of what we have, less than what he deserves. And if you're not a Christian yet, I invite you to just join us with prayer and be thankful for what we have in life. We have two ways of giving. One is through the QR code, the link, or the other one is our traditional method of writing a check and mailing it in. Two different options for giving. One is writing to EFCI. That is for our general fund for operational cost. The other one is for EMCI. That is to support the local mission, the overseas mission. You know, just because of pandemic, of the shutdown, our preaching of the gospel does not stop here. Our gospel surpasses, exceeds the shutdown, the pandemic, the virus, because our God. Is all powerful, and His love is for everyone. And let us pray for our offering today. Father God, we thank you for everything in our lives, the good and the bad. God, we thank you for the good because you are a good God, and we also thank you for the not so good things in our lives, because God, we know nothing happens in vain. You use all of our tears, all of our not so pretty life. For your glory, God, we trust that you can bring out ashes from, you can bring out ashes and turn it into beauty. And God, we know that you are a faithful God. Father, I pray for those who may be disappointed, who may need peace from you, Lord, that they can receive peace and they can be reassured again and again that you are a faithful God who will provide. And God, we thank you. We pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Point five. We will have communion today at the end of our service, and also we have a prayer session at the end after communion. So please prepare your 
juice and your cracker and get ready for communion. Hi 1.5, you probably did not expect that today it's me and that I won't change and come back. Just kidding, today we're talking about Ezra 4. Before we dive into Ezra 4, I just want to have a moment of truth. So what made you stay in our church? There are many reasons that one person can stay. Maybe because you saw someone that you feel like, ah, 好美哦,好帅哦, and you want to stay here. Or because you want resource or faith. I don't know what's your reason. But can you comment below what made you stay in our church? Interact with us. Comment below. We want to know what's your primary reason, the first reason. Maybe the reason has changed for now, but the first time in the beginning. Let's comment below. For me, I came and stayed at the church when I was in junior high. My aunt, who was my guardian back then, uh, brought me to church because she wants me to stay here to learn English in an affordable price. You know, church, they have uh, tutors who are college students. And Rosa was my tutor too. It was very affordable. So that's why I started to come into this church. What about you? How, and have you ever served in any capacity? You know, even if, you know, when we're before shutdown, some people were serving bread or ushers or AV coworkers or just people who arrange chairs or whatever, even in fellowship, small group, you are the vice leader. Have you served in any capacity? If yes, can you comment below? What role did you do? What job did you do? And of course, I've served in many capacities before. And that's very interesting because in the beginning, why did you start serving? I remember back in high school, ninth grade, when I first started serving. The reason why I started serving was because um, it's a popular thing to do, right? You know, be a staff of a club. It's, it's a great thing to do. You can put on your uh, Sension application for college. It's looking good. How about you? Why did you start serving? Maybe because your friends were serving? Or maybe because you have no clue that this is serving, you just want to help out. Or I, I don't know what's your reason, but think back. The first time when you serve, when you do something for the church, or even if it's not for the church, for a friend's favor, why did you do it? You know, a lot of times, we human, we have mixed motive. And this is just part of being human. 很多人来教会有很多很多的原因 Like 每一个人他可能不是one reason Maybe 有些人他serve because they truly believe in God, they love God But also because their friends are serving so they want to be a part of the team Or they come to church because they also believe in God But they also want the resource or the friendship, whatever that may be it's not just one singular reason. A lot of times, it's a lot of complicated reasons of why we do certain things. And today, we want to talk about what happens when we handle our non-believing neighbors with hostility during our time of rebuilding identity. We are being labeled as we are anti-gay, we are full of hatred, and sometimes we don't wear masks, a lot of different labels. It may not all be true, it may just be stereotype or just a few Christians that represent us. Or we are uh, Republicans, we are Trump supporters. Doesn't matter what these labels are, but people label Christians a certain way. It, Right now, I feel like this is an important time for Christians to reestablish, rebuild our identity, the image of Christ in the society. Because Christ should be associated with full of grace and truth. None of, it's not just a partisanship. It's not just a belief or it should be a life overflowing, exemplify Jesus. So today we want to talk about how we handle with our neighbor, how we interact with them, and what will happen when we handle our non-believing neighbors with hostility during our time of rebuilding identity. 
So let's look at Ezra four, 以斯拉记四章 I'll be reading in Chinese. You're welcome to read it in English. 犹大和便雅悯的敌人听见被掳回来的人为耶和华以色列的神重建圣殿，就前来见所罗巴伯和众族长，对他们说：“请让我们与你们一起建造吧，因为我们也像你们那样寻求你们的神。”自从亚述王以撒哈顿把我们带上这里的日子以来，我们一直向他献祭。但所罗巴伯、耶稣亚和以色列其余族长对他们说：“你们不能与我一同建筑神的殿，因为波斯王古列吩咐我们自己为耶和华以色列神建造殿。”于是那地方的居民。So we see that verse one it says the enemies of Judah, 敌人。And the last phrase says, and the bottom says, people around them, not the found the Jewmen. In fact, in chapter three, let me remind you that these people actually occurred before they called the people around them. So there was some tension going on since, like, because they call it people around them, the fear or their enemies. But who are they, though? You know, they are actually the native who were living there prior to their coming. I don't know if you remember, but Ezra is a time that after exile, after the Jewish were being taken out, taken into captivity to Assyrian Empire, and the king of Cyrus said, "Hey, Jews, you can go back to Jerusalem and rebuild your temple now." So after seventy years, these Jews finally come back to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem already were occupied by the local people. You know, seventy years is quite a long time to build their own、uh, culture, to have their own native language, and have their basically their own societies. And now, the Jews came back. These local native people become their neighbors. So the people around them are people who were living there for seventy years. But we see in the Bible that they call it the enemies or people around them. They're The same people, and if you read commentary, a lot of scholars would say that Ezra was probably written with the wisdom of hindsight, that they may not have appeared as such at the time. It's like chronicles. So basically, these people may not be looking like appearing like enemies. It was because of what happened. And they look bad, and they label these people around them as enemies. But these people may not appear as such at the time. So maybe at the time they were just neighbors; they weren't just enemies. But because of what happened later, they labeled them as enemies. But keep in mind, these enemies are their neighbors. They are the people around them who were just living there prior to their coming. And who are the people around them? The people around them are the Samaritans, basically. So Assyrians, they came and they conquered Jerusalem, and they intermarried with some of the Jews, and they became Samaritans. So they are not the pure blood Jews; they are half blood. Or it's the people who have not been taken into exile. It's the Israelites. They may be pure blood. They may just stay. They just marry within their own clan. But they are Israelites who have not been taken into captivity. So there are two groups of people there, and we don't know which are which. But we know the people around them consist two parts. And these people, the people around them, come and make an offer to the Jews who were sent back by the king of Cyrus. It says, "Let us help you build." Because like you, we seek your God and have been sacrificing to Him since the time of Ashurbanipal, king of As Assyria, who brought us here. So they offer to build a temple. Why? Because like you, we seek your God. We've been sacrificing to Him. We are like you, seeking your God. We've been sacrificing to Him. We are like you, seeking your God. We've been sacrificing to Him. Zerubbabel, Joshua, and the rest of the heads of the families of Israel answered, "You have no part with us in the building te a temple to our God. 
We alone will build it for our Lord, the God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, commanded us. You have no part with us. We ourselves Let's pause. Remember, I said back then there weren't enemies at the time; they were just neighbors. So the neighbors came to offer to build a temple. Why? Why do they offer to build a temple? Comment below if you can. Guess. Take a guess. Why would they come and build a temple? Think about it. Why would these neighbors and come and build a temple? There may be a couple of reasons. Maybe because this is 政治手段 or maybe they worship all deities. They worship a lot of gods, and Yehovah is just one of them. Or there may be genuine secret of faith. They genuinely want to、uh, worship the Lord. Or they 们不怀好意 Who knows? Maybe they want to bring their gods to Israel. Or they 们想陷害 Israelites. Who knows? But you know what? We don't know for sure. There is not one person of a commentator, scholar of Bible can tell you absolutely why they made the offer, because we know that people have mixed motive, and it wasn't clear in the Bible why did they all make such an offer. We can guess, we can speculate, but no one knows. And chances are, people are complicated. There may be a couple reasons why they came and made the offer. It may be a 政治手段 It may be that they are genuinely seeking God. Who knows? But what we do know is that. Hold on, sorry. The psalmist pray in Psalm one thirty nine. It says, "Search me, O God, know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts." See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. 寻求我的心 search my heart, 检查我的心，看我的心思意念是不是正走在正道上面 Lead me in the way of everlasting. You know why the psalmist pray that way? Because even the Bible, the psalmist recognized the fact that we human hearts have. Too complicated, or too complicated. We have a lot of mixed motive. So you know, the only way sometimes we don't even know our ulterior motives. So even ourselves, we don't understand ourselves. So that's why the psalmist prayed. The Bible taught us to ask God to search our hearts, to know our hearts, and try us to know our thoughts, and see if there's any offensive way in me, so that we can walk in the way everlasting. So today, these neighbors coming to offer help. We don't know. Probably a mixed motive. We don't know for sure. But the the psalmist only taught us to search our own hearts, not to search others' hearts. But something we do know for sure is why the Israelites must build a temple. The purpose of building temple. It's something that we know for sure. It's not a guess. Because the Bible tells us that His presence, God's presence, is for all people group. 上帝希望众人都可以来敬拜他。所以今天 they built a temple so that all may come together and worship God. And that all is not just for Jewish; it's for Gentiles, it's for non-believers. Everyone come together and worship God. And we can see that throughout Genesis, Exodus. You know, Genesis, Abraham. It says all nations should come to him. Exodus. You know what? These people, Israelites, they want to exit. They want to leave. Cross the Red Sea. In Exodus twelve, it says that there are mixed people groups. That means there are different colors of people exiting, leaving Egypt, leaving the land of bondage, 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 leaving
他必须要去 Nineveh non-Jewish place to preach gospel. And Jesus, he actually preached, evangelized the Samaritan woman at the well, right? John 4, the famous story. Revelation. We the New Jerusalem. Kind of like we are back to Garden of Eden again, walking with Jesus. It's all people go. One,主,万民,都要来敬拜他,用各种语言。所以今天, it's very clear why the Israelites must build a temple. So there is a place to worship God. So that all people group will see and come and worship the Lord Jesus. It's not limited to Jews only. And you know, when we look at the Bible, when we look at Ezra, we are tempted to look at Ezra 4 as an isolated chapter. But we should zoom out and look at the context, the overall context. 而且以前的圣经其实是没有分章节的 So Ezra 5, 1 actually followed immediate after the story It says 那时哈该先知和一多儿子撒加利亚先知奉以色列神的名向在犹大地和耶路撒人的犹大人传讲信息哈该先知撒加利亚先知 In fact, the Bible actually have 这两个 prophet 他们当时对于以色列人讲什么 当时以色列人收到信息撒加利亚而说什么? Many nations will be joined with the Lord in that day and will become my people. And then I'll skip to verse 12. The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion, the holy land, and will again choose Jerusalem. Many nations, 有许多国要来归附耶和华,做他的子民。上帝借由撒加利亚对当时的Zerubbabel,当时这些建圣殿的人说, Many nations will be joined with the Lord, become my people. 这些人都要回归回来。哈该,他甚至也在他的很短短的两章的书里面,也责备了以色列人,他们的属灵光景。也叫以色列人说,你要赶快盖圣殿,你要赶快盖圣殿。他们也责备了他们的wrong priority. 所以其实，even the Israelites have mixed motive too. 今天 Israelites said no to these neighbors offering help to build a temple. 有一些人可能会说，哦， because 这些人不 worship Yahweh or 这些人是 Samaritans, that's why the Jews said no. But you know what? Based on evidence, it seems like the will of God is for all people to come to worship Him. To know him through this project, it seems like that even Zechariah, Haggai, do 有一点的啊，念了一下 Israelite, and maybe that's why. When they turned down the offer, 你记得他他说什么吗？他们 turned down the offer of neighbor 是说 because the king of Cyrus, the king of Persia. 叫我们去盖，不是叫你们。That's why you should take no part with us. They could have said because you also worship other gods too, or because of whatever reasons that may be, or it's unclean, it's not holy, or God only commanded us to build a temple. None of these things the Israelites said. They only said the king called us. 而且这也是 Bible 记载的，没有任何的 comment. 就只是 left it there. 那 it left the Bible, the writer 放在那里 ，who makes us wonder. 那其实上帝是不是其实有别的心意？为什么是这个 king 没有叫你们盖，所以你们不要加入？为什么不是上帝？上帝的旨意在哪里 ？It makes us wonder too. 那我们 continue reading. 于是那地方的居民使犹大人的手发软，惊扰他们的建筑工程。又在波斯王古列的日子，常常会买参谋来敌对犹大人，要破坏他们建殿的计划。亚哈水鲁在位初期，他们写的诉状控告犹大和耶路撒冷居民。王的秘书以及他们的同僚急忙去耶路撒冷，到犹大人那里，用武力强迫他们停工。所以，在耶路撒冷，神的殿的工程就停止了，直到波斯王大利乌在位的第二年。Because the Israelites, the Jews, 
Liu Da Ren said no. Say you take no part with this. A flat out harsh no. The neighbors, 当地的居民 that's how they become enemies. Is that they're agitated, they're angry, so they came to discourage them, the Judah, and make them afraid and bribe the official so that the official will work against these Jewish people and frustrate their plan and make false accusation. And telling the king that hey, you know, ma, they finish the temple and they won't pay taxes. And what's the result? The house of God in Jerusalem can't just stop. Everything stopped. They returned to Jerusalem to build a temple, but because of a harsh, flat-out no to their neighbors, that turned their neighbors becoming their enemies, and then these enemies. 做了一件他们料料都完全没有料到的事情，是神殿的工就停止。神的殿盖这个神的殿 was the very reason why they came back, but because of 他们的 approach， 他们整个 primary goal 就没了 ，stopped for a while. In fact， 其实以前。Before we see now, the Bible. Before this Bible, Ezra and Nehemiah, they are two books that are together. It's a big giant book, so they are not separated. In fact, in these two books, the key leaders, the key people, 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 Of returning from um, uh, exile, 然后回到 Jerusalem 来嗯、uh, 盖 temple 来教人 Torah， 然后来重建 the walls of Jerusalem。这两个人都跟 Zerubbabel 现在这个 Zerubbabel 一样，都跟当地人有冲突。They all have conflict with the people around them, their neighbors. In fact, the way that they handle these conflict is questionable. It's an overarching theme throughout the book of Ezra and Nehemiah that these three key leaders of the book, the three main characters, all have conflict with people around them, and then the way they handle conflict are questionable. Zerubbabel flat out say no to neighbor to rebuilding temple, so the temple stopped building. Ezra. He came back and teach the people Torah, and then he saw the. People who returned from exile, the Jews, started to have intermarriage with Samaritans, with people outside of them, the Jew, the pure blood. Ezra was so pissed that he offered a heartfelt repentance prayer. Then demanded all the people to divorce their wives, and then send back the kids and the wives to where they belong. That's ridiculous. In Malachi, actually, Malachi, the prophet, actually condemns, saying that we shouldn't just tell people to divorce and send back their kids. Ezra was so harsh that he said, "Because you don't obey God's law, so these marriages must stop. Send back the kids, regardless of how old your children are. Leave your parents because you are not worshiping God. 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 难道他们不应该是带这些人信主吗？怎么会是 divorce cut cut cut？ Nehemiah， the end of Nehemiah was， 他开始鞭打人，开始 pulling people's hair。然后 ，in fact， 在嗯， um, 圣经里面有说到说 ，Jerusalem should be a city without walls， should be a city without walls。然后是一个 all people may come， 因为 because God is their wall to protect them。That's what God said in Zechariah. But Nehemiah, he 怎么样？他说这些当地人 people around them again offer help. But Nehemiah said no, and then started a conflict. So 到最后 Nehemiah 必须要有人保护他，才能盖好他的工作。所以其实这三个 key leaders， 他们 the way they handle the people around them, the way they handle their neighbors, all all questionable. Even in the Bible, they don't have clearly tell them to do this, but they did what they do, and then the results are not good. So 
，我们就必须要思思考，这三个人 z e r u b e l Ezra、Nehemiah， 他们三个人回去 Jerusalem 耶路撒冷，不管是盖圣殿、教摩西五经，还是盖城墙。其实他们的目的是 rebuild the identity， 他们是想要 rebuild 这个所谓的 image of God there， 让这个成为一个圣地。可是当他我们这个我们现在的基督徒也是在做一样的事情，不是吗？我们在这个世代是属于不不属耶稣的世代，是一个很混乱的时代，而我们也在 trying to build the identity of Christ， a Christian identity。Rebuild this identity in this era, in this world, when people around us are non-believers, or some are believers, or some are believers of many, many things, including God. So what happens when we handle our non-believing neighbors with hostility during our time of rebuilding identity? What happens? Based on the stories, we know that there will be unintended. A consequence, unintended consequence. Zerubbabel probably have never ever thought that this temple, the project, would come to a stop simply because he said no harshly. It's unintended consequence. In fact, 常常对我们来说，有时候后果看起来好像无妄之灾，好像好像 it's an accident， 好像我是比较衰的那个人。可是 a lot of times it's not just 比较衰，而是我们自己的后果，我们自己的行为所带出来的后果。People wonder why 这些这个世界这么讨厌 Christians， 甚至 oppose us， 然后觉得我们为什么呃为对我们有很多的成见。You know, a lot of times you and I contribute to it too. What are we posting on Facebook? What are we talking about? Are we sensitive? We, we, in talking, I am guilty of that too. No matter what your party is, what your faith is, even if it's the same party, we still have different views. We have different perspectives on different policies. But how we communicate matters. How we deliver our mass message matters. We can all have the same view on homosexuality. But how we communicate the message matters. Do people feel that we are just harshly saying no, flat out no, or they feel the full of grace and truth? That is who Jesus is. You and I are being held accountable by God of how we display the image of Christ in the society. We are being held accountable. The Christian call is to be in the world, but not of the world. A lot of times, we will put our Christian faith label as set apart. Oh, we will just separate these people. We will just separate them. But it's not true. We are called to be in the world. That means we are called to quote unquote blend in, to contextualize our message, contextualize our gospel. But Even when we contextualize, we don't change the essence of truth. We don't change our stance. Friends, we need to pause and think. We, for some positions of stance, or for some parties, even don't say parties, even if it's not related to the U.S., maybe we have some people who don't have any connection with the U.S. or some people who have a strong opinion on the U.S. or 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 the U.S. 我们不知道读我们 post 的人，我们也不知道我们讲话时候听到的人的感受是什么。可是诗篇说，我们要求上帝鉴察我们的心 ，pray to God to search me, to know my thought, try me, to see if there is any offensive way in me. A lot of times. 当我们很坚持一个政治立场，或是一个 belief， 或是我们自己的一些 pet peeve 的时候 ，a lot of times. Maybe it's not the biblical absolute truth. Maybe there's a mixed motive in us. We 可能会觉得说 ，Oh, because this is what 
God says it's right, so I'm going to hold on to it. But search our hearts, Lord. Test our thought. 我们常常的动机是很复杂的。So remember, in the beginning, 我请你去思考 why did you stay our church? 为什么你来教会？为什么你 stay? What's the motivation? And remember, I said the motivation may be complicated. Right now, 有时候我来教会 it's a couple of reasons. I truly want to worship God, but also because my kids 可能需要来教会 socialize or 要上 Chinese school, 或是我的 kid 有那个呃，上儿童部觉得说太好了，我就可以不用顾孩子 ，nursery 好棒，好方便。Or because I'm serving, I have obligations. Or because I'm bored, or I want to see my friends. There could be a lot of different reasons of why we came to church that day. 甚至今天你在这里收看，可能有 mixed motive too. You, maybe you are genuinely want to receive the word of God, but there may be other reasons because of duty, because of obligations, or because you want to see people on Facebook, or you just happen to be here. I don't know, but mixed motive is real. It's part of our lives, and why we start serving, same thing. You know, the work of God is not limited by the most mixed motive of people. But we are the ones who can be easily distracted by others or our own motive. 上帝的沟不会被人复杂的动机限制住，但人却会被他人和自己的动机干扰。At the end, the building of temple resumed and continued. But Zerubbabel, he just paused for ten years. 这样子，你知道有时候我们在教会。我们常常会想说，哎，这个人为什么要这样做，或是那个人为什么要这样做？我们会有很多的想法。我们甚至会 second guess 别人的 motive intent. Why they are serving? Why do they come to church? 啊，为什么他 offer help? 哎，他不是基督徒哎，那他可以做这些事吗？哎，他不是基督徒哎，我我我当朋友可能价值观不合。But you know what? The work of God is never, never, ever limited by 这些人可能很多 ulterior motive， 也不会被 limited， 因为这些人不信耶稣，跟你价值观不一样。No， 可是我们我们会被 distracted， 我们会觉得说，嗯，这个人为什么这样？那个人为什么这样 ？In fact， 可能我们自己的心也需要被检查。我们需要 reflect on our hearts， 我在想什么？我在怕什么？我在担心什么？是不是我的自卑，还是我的自傲 ，come into the way？ 所以让我 distort the message。You know, Psalms, the Bible only taught us to search our hearts. We are not to examine others' intent, but we are called to be image bearer of Christ. We are called to be the light and the salt of the world. That means. Our job is to illuminate Christ to the people. We are not to be the light and the salt of the world. That's too harsh. We are to gently shed light into darkness so people can follow. Okay. So today, let us spend some time examine our conduct, examine our speech. Do do they properly? Send out the message of Christ in their contextualized culture, or we are just harshly flat out say no, and how people reject them in the back. And you know what? There will be an un- unintended consequence. And let us spend a moment, reflect. Before you leave today, we have communion. Communion is for Christian or believers only, and we'll have Pastor Casey to lead us to do the communion today. Please prepare your heart and prepare your items, and let us pray. Father God, thank you for your wonderful love. Your you're just so good to us, and thank you, God. Help us to 
可以将你的 gospel live out in this world in a way that is acceptable, appealing to the people around us. Help us to be full of grace and truth, because this is who you are. Jesus, thank you for your living sacrifice. Help us to offer ourselves up as a living sacrifice. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. 各位一点五代的弟兄姐妹平安，让我们预备我们的心来一起领圣餐。圣经说。耶稣拿起饼来，感谢了，拨开递给他们，说：“这是我的身体，为你们舍的，你们应当这样行，为的是纪念我。”饭后，他照样拿起杯来说：“这杯是用我的血所立的新约，这血是为你们流的。”耶稣拿着这个饼，拨开，说：“这是我的身体 ，broken for you, for your sins and your salvation。”然后他拿起这杯，说：“这是我的血 ，it is the blood of my new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sin。”我们一起来领受圣餐。我们一起低头来祷告。阿门，天父，我们来到你面前，向你献上感谢。天父，我们感谢你差派你的独生子耶稣基督来到这世上，为我们而活，为我们而死，被钉在十字架上，为我们流的宝血，洗净了我们的罪，让我们能来到你面前。And that you see us as righteous before you, because of what Jesus has done for us. 主啊，我们感谢你，主啊，我们纪念你的牺牲，我们纪念你所受、所受的苦。And you have done everything for us, Lord. So help us to lay our lives down and to do everything for you as well. 主啊，我们把我们的罪带到你面前，求你来赦免，求你来洗净，让我们可以有一个重新的开始。And from this moment on, from this week, this Sunday, Lord, let us start afresh. Let us have a new beginning, so that we may live a life. That is glorifying to you, a life that honors you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you.